Welcome everyone to today's week of Flux Cup. We're here with the Apprentice Division with MI6 versus GGW, or may I say, the Crayon Munchers that they have gone through a rebrand. Personally, not my favorite, but otherwise, I'm here by, well, I'm here with Florida, and Florida, it's great to see you. How are you doing? Uh, pretty good. I didn't oversleep my alarm this time. Uh, so I can actually help cast. Uh, yeah, and, and we're Gen Z. In today's society, if you don't sleep over, it's going to be pretty impressive, you know? But this yeah. week, we're having a uh, kind of a very low-rated team who's just gone through a bunch of changes, new staff due to smurfing allegations, uh, new branding. They're going to be completely fresh slate, but they're going up against MI6, which is debatably the most even of the teams. They're not great, but they're not terrible. So what, what is your feeling going into these, this match? So I, so GWW now Crayon Munchers or CM, uh, they have been through a lot of rough patches. You mentioned they've had to rebrand, they had to draft new people. Uh, so we'll have to see uh, how they perform. I have I've actually scr this is a fun story. I actually scrimmed them because I was trialing for another team, but nonetheless they are looking not as strong. Uh, they're trying to get their ducks in a row, and they're a little bit behind the eight ball. Uh, MI6, though, I feel is a really good team. Uh, they took, oh, shoot, I, I should know this, because I casted this game. Uh, they took their opponent last week to a fifth map, uh, and I actually really enjoyed how they played. Uh, the only problem I had was the tank line that they have been fielding a little bit is kind of inflexible. Um, so. For context, uh, you can, I don't know if they can see the lineup right now, but uh, Herping Yoshi is in on the main tanker right now. And that, the reason they do that is Herping Yoshi usually plays that Wrecking Ball as the meta is Wrecking Ball Sigma that we'll have to see, especially with the Sigma nerf uh, that just came out. But uh, usually that tank line is it's so inflexible that they're not really able to adapt to what the other team changes, and that was MI6's downfall. So... We'll have to see if CM can adapt to MI6's play style. Uh, and I feel like if they can do that, MI6 is going to be in trouble. 100%. And when it comes to CM, where they have a bunch of interesting players, at least. I think they have a lot of potential when it comes into working well, but they don't know how their pieces fit together. And especially when going up against MI6, at least their tank line has some bit of flexibility. They have Herbie and Yoshi, who's pretty much a known ball player or diva. So he's able to flex around, but the meta is changing right now. And I don't know about you, Florida, but it's been very confusing to understand. Sig just does not work in it anymore. I'm seeing a lot of more Zarya with Ball, but I'm also seeing Hanzo kind of come in with Echo. So really, it's kind of... Do you think these teams are going to really try to run whatever this meta is or go like straight to a Brawl combo? I feel like they're going to try to do something that fits their comfort zone. Uh, I will say that Sigma right now... So Sigma can't be the solo shield anymore. I have seen him. He still can He still really works well in double shield. I've been seeing a lot of Ryan Sigma, uh, double barrier, which uh, he out he performs pretty well in that situation. However, I do agree that right now he's not the best pair with that wrecking ball. I would not be surprised to see a dive perhaps come out from Mi Six, or they just stick with their comfort zone this week, uh, and maybe they didn't ha haven't had the time to prepare. Uh, with this meta shift, though I'm saying that, and I don't, you I, again, I don't know if they can see the lineup or the lobby or not, but they just switched out herping for Killer Queen, so I think Killer Queen's a tank player. Well, so they would just, have to be. Yeah, they would have to be. So I think maybe we're going to see a shift away uh, from the ball sig, especially with the sig nerfs. Uh, and I do agree, Hanzo is might also get a lot more uh, play time here as his storm arrow. Buff, while it wasn't like the most significant, it was still, uh, it was an improvement. While the other, while Ash got a nerf and Widow is in a okay spot, uh, it she isn't in the worst spot. But Double Sniper now has shifted towards Hanzo Widow instead of the Ash Widow, which would be double hit scan. Uh, so yeah, so, pretty much yeah, yeah. Uh, also, uh. Yeah, and the, again, the big thing is I want to. I'm gonna be interested to see Mi6 in this new play style. Uh, I know Tree 60's Widow uh, is absolutely insane, uh, and Crake. Uh, he was playing Tracer last time, uh, last game, last week, 
uh, and he was doing he was performing really well. But I wouldn't be surprised to see him out on the Hanzo, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, and they might try to run a double no, sniper, to be honest right, with you. Don't. So we'll have to see though as we go into Li Jing. Yeah. Now this map is very popular specifically because uh, specifically because it works well with Brawl, Junkrat, Symmetra. It's pretty much the cornucopia if you want to try and control. So when it comes to this, these teams have to have very synergized pushes or else they can really easily lose the fight when it comes to the first second. Especially if they end up deciding to go with a Zenyatta with his 30% healing damage, it could be a bit insane. But we're not. As we're going to be seeing immediately from the uh, Crayon Munchers, which I feel like is some form of slur still, we're going with this monkey or double shield form of thing, which I feel is semi-weak against this brawl composition that MI6 is going for. Yeah, I agree. If they go with this Roadhog, uh, I would... Okay, no, no, they're going to go Ryan's Oreo Brawl. That's fine. Uh, actually, we're going to see a mirror composition on both sides, which is obvious. This point really favors the Symmetra Junkrat. Uh, Junkrat gets a lot of spam damage off, and Symmetra is just really good on this point. Uh, this, it's gonna is see this is one of Symmetra's best maps. Yep, it's going to see how they rotate. Immediately, Cram Munchers have to back up. They're taking a lot of damage through this choke. And Dream's able to pick up Odin Shan. That's going to give them a big push into this. Turtle, u Turtle using the bubble. And now it comes in rotation. anti Gristle making this fight even. They don't have the speed boost. They're not going to be able to run in. Both teams still having a consistent amount of healing. But Tree gets picked out. And now Cram Munchers are finding the picks that they want. They're going to be able to start to add in the pressure. But they still are staying back. Looks like they're going to be able to pick off Killer Crane, and this is honestly their fight win. Yeah. Uh, the big pro the big thing with this composition is if you get one pick off, uh, if, especially if it's a damage dealer, you're in exposed. And also losing the Lucio really early kind of negated MI6's ability to really brawl. But uh, still, this is uh, CM's point, and here and as the engagement comes out. We are going to be seeing a pause go in immediately as... They use grab, field, rip, tire, and uh, field again. So th this is not good, looking for any size. Corb's apparently having around 20,000 ping as the fight starts. And I know this is going to be tilting all the players. Nobody likes having a pause mid-fight, you know? So when it comes into this, how I don't think cram munchers are going to have the advantage. Uh, Snake is already... Barely surviving by the Immor. And well, the Red Tire is going to be attempting to make a big play. So they have to either survive when it comes to this, or MI6 have to look for some form of advantage. Yeah. Uh, big thing is where is the. I don't know where the BAP window is. I can't see it from my perspective. It's uh, MI6, uh, MI6's BAP window is kind of more behind them, but uh, crayons are like literally in the choke, split between the Okay, so the thing is, I they've already lost Crake. Crake has just died, um, and they're inside the Immortality Field. There's only the two tanks that are inside. I do think, actually, uh, CM is not in a bad place here. Yep, look at this. There's Brawl immediately coming up. Riptire gets broken in, but D and Dace and his Snake go down. This is the advantage that they wanted. Very unfortunate for the side of Crayon Munchers. <laughs> so I got, I got Jinx. I didn't see the BAP window up here. Uh, it was like, it disappeared on my screen. So I didn't see that the BAP window was there for Kree to spam through. So, uh, yeah, no, obviously, as soon as Corbs disappeared for a little bit, uh, he was... Never mind, Corbs did not DC or anything. He just had ping issues. All right. Nevertheless, uh, but the thing is, they only have one ultimate, which is the Shatter, while there is the Beat and the Shatter yeah. and the Simwall. Is Oni Chen's able to pick off Craig. Now the Brawl is coming in. Shatter gets blocked. The Simwall being used. Now, Sound Barrier allowing this team to push in a bit more. MI6 tried to do anything, and they managed to break out Snake's Shatter. But Killer Queen's going to go down in the process. Oni Chen has high charge. He's going to be able to. And that's kind of a crucial part of why they picked Sim. Yeah, uh, Tree is also kind of popping off. He kind of went around the back and got a couple of picks. But nevertheless, really nice play uh, by Sneaky Snake blocking that Shatter. And even though he died, he still was able to get bait the Killer Queen into engaging. Uh, and force out a trade. So, really good play coming out from Cry Munchers, and they were really showing a uh, really good adaptability uh, to this meta. 
Yeah, we're gonna be seeing Riptar being used from Krayak as the grab, but it gets bubbled, isn't able to get anyone. Immor being used to try to sustain this fight. Now they're looking for any advantage that they can as they rotate around the choke for any ult. Tree does have, but the field comes up. They still manage to pick off Anti Crystal. The flux, be the field being used, so now they have extra damage in, and they're just able to brawl. Honestly, when it comes into di uh, to this fight, it looks like Cran Munchers are less aggressive, but they are still able to pick off. Um, MI6's inconsistent positioning. Yeah, uh, what happened there as well, a ton of ultimates came out that forced uh, Cram Munchers not able to re-engage onto that grab, and that really put them at a disadvantage. Yep. They're using this Riptide to look for an opening when it comes to this push. It's going behind, so now they have to be careful from MI6. They have three ultimates. They see the Riptide coming. It's being hidden, but it's unable to pick anyone off. It still gets the MR, and the Pufa's gonna go down. Graph goes out. It doesn't hit anyone. They just go to the right, so it doesn't fall into their LOS. High Noon being used. They're looking to isolate, but people are in the MR. They're unable to die, but Snake was so put out of position that he ends up dying same as Ghost. And now, MI6 is just able to kind of steamrolling pick off the rest. Yeah, really nice play uh, initially out there from Anti Crystal, uh, baiting out the Immortality Field, just waiting, uh, forcing them back. The only problem is, because of that, uh, they also popped Window at the same exact time, so the Window got no value uh, from Dason. Yeah, both uh, of these committed so many ults in this fight. Now they're kind of standing by this joke. To uh, Toad and Die was the only one with an ultimate. Yeah, uh, sh oh, this Window is going to be huge. Unless yeah, they put it. The Sound Bear gets you shot! It comes out and hits everyone! They weren't respecting it, and now they're able to just walk out. Krayak still wants to use this ability to try to stall this fight out, but there's nobody for the follow-up, and he's going to go down. Yeah, a uh, really clean shatter coming out there. Nice engagement as well, using that beat just to push straight past the window. So the window got no value from Totodile, and that was that was beautiful play coming out from Krayak Munchers. And they also have both DPS ults while they only have a beat on the other side. Yeah, and when it comes to this next fight, it's going into it's gonna be fighting over overtime. There, and this is one fight territory, and they have to be careful. Anti Crystal now using this ability. Hopefully, he can pop off the Rip Tire, unable to get a uh, first one. At all goes behind and pops out against Sue. That's absolutely massive. And Snake's able to pick up the rest. It may be overtime, but it looks like Mi Six is gonna be unable to capture this point, and Cram Munchies are gonna be winning first point. Yeah, big thing there. Uh... And Cram Munchers was able to engage really, really fast. Uh, and because of that, they won that neutral fight. They won that fight pretty quickly. Also, amazing tire. Nice placement uh, coming out from, I believe it was, yeah, from Anti-Crystal. Big thing I uh, I forgot to mention as well. MI6 did struggle with the brawl composition uh, last week against the Quaqua Queens. I finally remember the opponent. But they did struggle with the brawl composition. Uh, while the other team that they were facing, Quaqua Queens was able to kind of roll them on King's Row with the Brawl. So this does look like MI6 is starting to slowly adapt, but I will say that uh, Cram Munchers does look pretty clean, actually, right now. I mean, but when it comes to any marsupial team, we're going to be seeing them always run Brawl. It's just how they work. But both teams running the Symmetra, it's going to be seeing who touches first. It looks like... Uh, they're gonna be able to touching. They come out immediately charging and get tree. That's massive They don't have the stun anymore and now they're just brawling in mi6 struggling to just keep a foothold and they're all going down Yeah, nice play from sneaky just pinning into uh, like that was kind of a risky play But at the same time like the other team was kind of only just dropping in anyways uh, also, I will say that the composition that um, That mi6 was running was a little bit weak uh, in the direct brawl because they were lacking the Reaper and they only had the Kree. Uh, Killer Queen comes, comes out. out. Yeah, Killer Queen went too far and was didn't able. The Shatter went behind them and didn't hit them exactly, but it managed to pick off everyone else. Killer Queen needs to be a bit more careful in their position. And also, nice, nice, nice commitment as well coming out from Cryo Munchers. At least they engaged. Uh, and then just passively wait for them to try to enter the choke. They engaged quickly and won, and won that fight decisively. Yeah, Snake is now going to be re-switching up on that Shatter cooldown. They're looking to use his Echo to make that value, but Dream went in too far. The turret slowed him down, and they managed to pick him up. Now here comes in the Brawl. Snake goes down so low, and Echo's insane damage is able to pick him up. Now they're without a main tank, but they're still able to pressure these shows. Anti-Crystal's coming up on an ult. Oni-Chan has the field. He's using it, but it gets out too late. 
to be able to save Anticrystal from any incoming damage. Ghoster to also overcommits into this fight, manages to get Killer Queen, but now the field is the only one protecting them, only chance able to get Prayer. But now in this fight, their main take has come back and he's fighting them. And Oni Chan just gets his 3k while Snake manages to die, but he still picks off Toe to Dial. Yeah, this is the advantage of winning the first fight on this point. Uh, Symmetra is really able to button down and hold down the point. And this is not looking good right now for MI6. They do have a couple of ultimates. They have three, four ultimates coming onto the board. Uh, at, CM is still down by one, technically. Uh, they're going to be able to probably build about equal, but we'll have to see. Yeah, look, now they're being careful. A nasty shatter comes out. It only gets two. Trin's able to pick up Dayson, but they're not able to get too much follow-up. Sound barrier being popped in with this Graviton, but they're protecting themselves. Copy Shatter comes out, but the Death Blossom is there to help the team. They don't have any ults, and Grab gets used. They're investing a lot of ults into a lost team fight. If we look on the side of MI6, they use Shatter, they use Grab, they use copy they use sound barrier and they're not going to be able to touch and honestly crayon muncher is able to win this point semi convincingly yeah uh that was decisive coming out from the side of crayon munchers i will also say a uh, really nice use of those ultimates uh just the counter uh also not the counter but also i liked how crayon munchers were using the ultimates first constantly uh and they were the ones engaging and ah, oh, that was that grab blossom which is beautiful coming out on the side uh, of anti-crystal. Nice, uh, nice, uh, uh, thought. You were in a losing fight, but you might as well force out more ultimates, uh, and in the end, it turned out winning them the overall team, winning that map, uh, because of the decision by anti-crystal. So, really nice job coming in from Crayon. Crayon is definitely looking like a more improved team here. MI6 is kind of looking a little flat on their feet. I did, again, mention they weren't looking too happy on anything that was not the ball sig, and now that ball sig, uh, may not be as strong and is not as strong as it used to be. Uh, this is definitely, this might be hurting MI6. Honestly, if I if I had to give you kind of that area of, like, idea, Ball is still the best uh, tank in the game right now because Blizzard doesn't understand what it comes to balancing. But you, you are right. MI6, they have people who worked very well against this Ball sit comp, and they pretty much get rolled. So honestly, I'm wondering if this is just a rebrand diff or if MI6 are trying to warm themselves up because they're losing against... Uh, pretty much the worst team in the league right now, but they can still bring it back. A hundred, but that, but that fight looked so worrying. If I had to be honest, you know. Yeah. Uh, in all fairness, uh, to MI six as well, uh, they were forced onto the two maps that favors brawl. Uh, so they were at a and considering brawl is not their favorite composition, I do know that they also like to run a double shield. Uh, when they can. Uh, so. Considering that they were on the two points that do not favor their composition, uh, they were kind of at a disadvantage. But at the same time, Cray Munchers were looking a lot more even. I will say, uh, if CM has CM might have actually just closed the gap, honestly, to the rest of the teams because I felt this league was pretty even except for GWW slash CM, uh, and I did like how CM was performing. And also MI six again, also to give a little bit more credit to them, they were performing pretty well. They were getting pickoffs. They were killing. It just CM was looking were looking a lot better as a unit, while MI6 were looking a little bit more individually, especially on those DPS. Yeah, but I feel like a major issue going into these games is we need to look at these players on the individual ratings and how they did. Because we have their stats coming in, and we already can can tell snake was carrying those games he had such insane shatters and such insane pop-off that he has the second most amount of damage on the team at 8k which anti-crystal was able to get at 10k he was rivaling a junk rat for half the game and you mm -hmm. honestly have to give him privilege for that yeah no, well sneaky. if we sneaky had, uh, as a personal friend I, I actually know sneaky snake pretty well he's a personal friend of mine and he his reinhardt is actually really really good uh, and also Ghost Turtle, who actually, uh, typically Ghost Turtle is on the main tank position. So it's interesting to see him on this off tank role. Uh, he actually was performing pretty well. Uh, and I think that, that's, that they were also synergizing pretty well. I, 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 I could see that. We are going to be seeing Yoshi coming in for killer, so they're most likely going to want to have to run this brawl. But going back on to the stats, when it comes to MI6, their supports had the most deaths in the game. Hufa had 10, while Totodile had 7. That, that yeah. It's pretty even with all their teams together, but your supports cannot be dying like that. Their job is just to be there and heal you, and if they're not there to do that, then you're pretty much throwing those games. 
Yeah, the weakness of MI6 uh, last week uh, in the Quaka Queens match was Totodial. He was dying uh, probably the most out of everyone on that team. And because of that, and I do think that the support line of MI6 definitely needs, uh, needs to try to stay alive a lot longer. They do, uh, they do seem to be the first one to die constantly. Uh, yeah. Also, I, I also, yeah, because also, uh, it was Pufa, uh, last map that was also dying the most from what I'm looking at. Because even though Totodile had the most heal, actually, never mind, ignore me. I was going to make a point about how Totodile had the most heals in the lobby, but, uh, Pufa had the lowest amount of heals. So they were, their average was a lot lower, I think. Actually, that might be a lot. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore until I apologize. Let's let's it's just okay. let's just get into this next map. Uh, it's Junker Town. Uh, Junker Town is actually a really good sniper map, especially for this Widowmaker. I'm not. I would not be surprised to see Mi6 roll out with this Widowmaker. Uh, that's what they did against Quaka Queens. They actually won the map against Quaka Queens with the double sniper composition with the Wrecking Ball. Uh, we'll have to see if they commit to it or if they have something else up their sleeves. That's fair. Well, let me go back onto that. Double sniper because Junker Town's very popular for it, and with it being in here, we need to look at one idea. By the way, I do want to point out that Squill is coming in for Dason and kind of switch, and while Anti is going on to the support area. But let's look at this. They have Tree Sixty and Krayak. I think that's a very powerful sniper line in this matchup compared to a Squilly and Manoni Chan, who at least to me are a bit unproven when it comes to these games. It's going to be one of their matches where they finally get to show their DPS lineups. But I fear that Snake has Snake and Ghost are a better main tank duo than Herping Yoshi and Dream, unless they're running this ball composition. Yeah, because uh, MI6, uh, so I do think Squillium uh, is in to either play a Tracer or a Sombra. That seems to be his specialty. Uh, that's from what I know. Uh, he tends to lean towards that, the, that kind of flanky play style, the the Tracer, Sombra, or even Doomfist. So I'm, I might be, I do not be surprised if they're running, uh, CM's going to be running a uh, composition uh, like I'm thinking Hanzo Tracer with the uh, double shield is most likely. We'll have to see though. Uh, and also it's interesting that Anti-Crystal is flexing around. Uh, I do know he is a, he is a really good, uh, he is kind of an all around player anyways. Uh, so it may kind of make sense that, um, Actually, it doesn't make. I don't. I'm not 100 percent sure why they're putting Squilliam in. Uh, again, I'm not. Maybe they found something. In, maybe they found something new without, about his snipers or his Widowmaker that they are pleased with. But we'll have to see. I'm. I'm guessing the reason why they wanted to do that was, you know, they don't have to sub in the bronze player to get some play time in. But looking into these games, you all are right. We're going to be seeing Cram Munchers going on to this double shield, but they're with the Hanto and McCree, which is a very powerful lineup. While we're seeing this ball sigma comp coming out of MI6. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like this double shield. It is incredibly weak, and any coordinated team can break it. So I very feel MI6 should be able, theoretically, to either run in on this or just switch to Brawl very and very badly when the fight. Yeah, the big, th the big thing I'm going to have to say, though, is because Dream is going to be the only shielding for that Zenyatta, if, if Squilliam is able to put enough pressure onto the prime onto the sigma shield then it could the zen and the brig could be exposed uh by the hanzo and kree so i do like the idea here of running this poke yep seeing this composition going in tree's gonna have a lot of room to look for snipers he's just taking his time as these teams are going out we need to remember that sigma's a lot weaker now due to the changes his shield is less reactive and more proactive Anti-Crystal goes low, they get booped, the slam coming down, he's able to move them around, get stunned, has to go back a bit, and they're not pushing the payload, they're just kind of waiting to get a poke or something. Um, now they're pushing I like, the- Yeah, I like how Cryer Munchers are playing this, playing this back corner, forcing them to- forcing, uh, MI6 to engage into them, because their composition is gonna be better in a unit and not, uh, chasing down kills right now. 100%. But the issue comes in is that Tree has so much room. He gets two headshot picks, and Yoshi's gonna slam down, and he's able to get sneaky from it. You don't want to give this Widow room. This is why Double Shield isn't that good. They just slowly run in. They lose picks. They're unable to add pressure, and Tree is showing his hit scan potential. Yeah, the only, I think, the main reason uh, that went wrong is because Ghost Turtle 
uh, was not paying attention to where the Widowmaker was, and they were not paying attention to their flank. That's the big thing with this composition. You cannot give the Widowmaker free line of sight. Either, uh... Oh, nice, nice kill, though. On the Dream, the ball might die here as well, but no, no, the ball is gonna live because ball is insane. No, Dream uh, cheated only a 1 in 7 trillion chance that he was gonna die there. I guess it was just his... We're seeing Tree kind of take these sniper angles, but I'm going to let you go as we're waiting for this fight to continue. Yeah, a uh, big thing is I, I do think Ghost Turtle uh, kind of misplayed his barrier. He lost track of the Widowmaker. The Sigma's primary job in this composition is to put that barrier into the front, into the yep. face of the Widowmaker. Look at that. We're going to see Pulse Bomb comes out, but the Amor comes to save with the slam. But here's the Gravitic Flux. They have no ultimates to save them. That's going to be able to pick up two. Anti is going low. Same with only chance William. And they're unable to do anything. And this is my point exactly. MI6 with this ball comp is going to win no matter what. You're playing this double shield. It's not meta anymore. And it's pretty much not even good to run. Yeah, I feel like uh, CM is kind of just uh, habitually going back to the double barrier. While uh, MI6, even with the SIG nerfs, are playing this composition really, really well. However, I, I do think Dream is about to get caught out here. He's all by himself. Uh, and this may not be the best thing. Uh, however, Tree is going to get a lot more line of sight here on this particular point. And I do agree with you that the Orisa is in a really vulnerable spot, right? Not the Orisa. But right now, they can't, they're not putting enough pressure on the tree. Tree is just getting away with murder right now. Because Squilliam can't necessarily take the duel with her. Uh, and because of that, uh, Widow is basically free to flank and try to get pickoffs. You're pretty right. But ultimates are in favor of Crayons. They're using this rally, building up that armor. But they're still not wanting to engage. Both ultimates from the tanks being used, looking to pick off, but Totodao uses trans, and this is the opportunity they want. The mines coming out, slamping on them. Tree does go down his first death, but mine, half of the mines got put on top of the, the fidget spinner kind of spiral thing, and it's going to give them less chance of mines killing them, but it's going to go down, same with Krayak, and now they have to back out in this fight. That is really unfortunate about those mines. Those mines would have killed at least four people because uh, they didn't even have immortality field at the time. So that was so close. Uh, unfortunately, it just gets scooped up. I will say that the composition gets a little bit better on this specific, specific point uh, just because double barrier is really good at controlling the line of sight and there aren't that many extra lines of sights that can be taken by the Widowmaker or the Tracer. Though the Tracer is putting pressure on the Squilliam and Squilliam will die to tree. Yeah, that was an amazing combo. Now the slam, pulse bomb, Corpse wasn't paying attention. He gets slammed and was walking backwards with Anti-Crystal when the pulse bomb came out, and he just dies to it, and that's so unfortunate. And now their entire team's going down Craig. I can see why he was being shown as such a good DPS player. He's getting in these final blows, but MI6 don't have any ultimates. They have, they're coming up on some, but in return, uh, the enemy has three ultimates. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Uh, we'll have to see if this dragon's getting value. That's going to be the main saving... Gr that's going to be the best saving grace here uh, from Crayon. But Ghost yep. is going to die on Go point. Ghost is going out early. They're now using this rally for that broad potential. Dragon's being used on point. The team, enemy team has to contest, but nobody's going to touch tree. And unfortunately, they are unable to do anything as they are unable to cap. I mean, as they're unable to stop the cap at 3 minutes and 10 seconds, that is a very good time for MI6, looking so new and so clean on this ball composition. I mean, yeah. when you when you have Herping Yoshi, you know... Yeah. Uh, the this reason man, he has the brain of a ball. You know, he does he can't play anything. Yeah. Uh, Herping Yoshi is typically an off-tank anyways, but his Wrecking Ball uh, this season of Flux Cup has been insane. Uh, for at least last week, he was he was performing extremely well. And even if the meta, sometimes like even if the meta changes by a little bit, if you're confident enough in it, don't change what you're doing. Just go with what you're what you feel confident in. Maybe make adaptations if it's not working. But if it is working, just stick with it. To be honest, Lord, I, I'm pretty sure crayons were pretty confident on that double shield. We saw how that turned out for them. I don't know if they are that confident, <laughs> to be honest with you. I don't think they were expecting. Um, I don't think they were expecting the ball sig, to be honest with you. Uh, and I I'm would surprised. Be really I, I'm surprised. I'm a little surprised that there has not been more adaptation, by the way, on the side of Crayon because they were just getting barreled over uh, by the tracer, by the Widowmaker. Uh, I'm surprised they haven't put either like Squilliam onto like a Sombra to put more pressure on the tree. 
or even uh, a tracer of their own. Uh, and also, it looks like they're going to commit to the double sniper, double barrier here uh, against the same exact composition coming out from MI6, yeah. which I am not. I am not happy with this decision. I think they need to make a little bit more adaptations here. No, I just think they don't need to play double shield. Honestly, you could do much better with Brawl. You want to be running in and abusing the fact that their backline is pretty much free. The Sigma shield can't do anything. If you run right with a Diva Bomb, it's pretty much a guaranteed at least 1k placed correctly. Now they're just able to kind of move in and take free space. MI6 unable to do anything, but they're just waiting for the choke. The slam comes in. Yoshi's just kind of stalling them while they're waiting for Tree to get a pick into these sight lines, taking their time. Snake is discorded at 30% doing a majority of the damage and now they're preparing and this is the point where they have to be careful slam going down putting them into the air the rock comes out and misses Yoshi being stunned able to get out of this fight but they're unable to really do much both teams kind of in a stalemate now they have to throw out the Immor. that's the most powerful ability thrown out so early the slam coming down anti crystal going low and ghost turtle is gone oni chan is out they're on it no they get the res out just barely but now you're just ult charged and this is why you don't run double shield well no what happened there was uh they split down the middle because three of them were concerned about Craig in the back line and three of them kept pushing the cart and because of that lack of communication Craig was able to sneak in uh, put a lot of pressure on. Uh, a rock came out, and Tree was able to find that pick. And then Craig was able to clean up. So I really do think that right now, uh, MI6 has the advantage. I like how they're, how the Zen is also playing, just focusing on shield break. Tree as well. Oh my god, Tree yeah. is just a master of a Widowmaker in this division. And it's just... It also, I like how MI6, again, are playing it. They're playing good rotations. They're keeping their space. Because uh, unlike uh, the double barrier composition, they can play extremely broken apart and separated. Yeah. Well, look, Pulse Bomb comes out. The Immor saves them, but Corbs is going to go down. Ancy's going to go down. And look, they're waiting for these opportunities to get in position and sit there. But the point of double shield is to stand in one spot, move in slowly with your barriers. But, their comp but the MI6's composition is about playing angles and looking for opportunities. They're using their ults first to get these advantages. And honestly, it's going down to a minute 40. They need to do something. They're just now coming up on their tank ults and DPS. Yeah, there's not really that many ultimates either that can like massively impact the composition. Uh, if you notice, Anti-Crystal used Window, but they got zero value because he only focused on the supports who were hiding behind a wall. So there was, there's like a lot of the ultimates on the side of crown munchers rely on dropping it into the middle of a group but they're not grouped up uh who are you gonna dragons you're gonna flux here there's because the targets are scattered all across the map yeah now look half of the team is backwards while the tanks are alone mines are used to split them the m order comes out it's unable to hit their tanks the eat is now gone they have to walk into it and ghost is gonna go down same with corp and snake look at this mi6 using amazing ult economy to be able to pick off these fights. Yeah, I really do think this is both a compositional and a team play perspective. Uh, Oni gets tree. Uh, they don't. They do not have the res, so they will be down that Widowmaker, and they're up by one. Uh, so we'll have to see if the uh, Transcendence or the Rally is going to be able to counter the Flux, Bongo, Dragons, and Bob that's going to be coming out. It's all about positioning in this fight. Bob's going to come out. He has a good position, a very large angle while the enemy, they're using Crystal to touch. Pufa is unable to hit off that Rally before he dies, but Tony is able to get Oni-chan. Kraya getting Squilliam, the Transcendence being used. So now it's only three on cart versus the three. Kraya has so much room, the Flux coming out, and it's gonna get Anti-Crystal. They had so many ults, but they don't commit half of them, and they're gonna be unable to touch. And like I said, Double Shield throwing, because MI6 is tying this up in a 1-1 series. I do think the idea is there to run Double Barrier, but the problem is this composition relies so much on angles, and if you try to block off one angle, especially with the Sig nerf, uh, Sig cannot re reset his angle, uh, reset his shield as quickly anymore. Uh, and yeah, this also, I must think I think we're just playing a lot better as a team. Uh, they were calling out the, uh, there was a lot of times where herping would slam, a rock would come out and slam a target as Craig dived in and finished off a target. So I really think MS6 is well, they're just playing better as a unit right now. While uh, Cram Munchers kept splitting down the middle, worrying so much about the flanker in the back, that the tanks kept getting exposed uh, in the front. Yeah, but like, that's why you don't run double shield, because you can only cover so many angles. You know, like, 
when you're playing double shield, at least when it was meta, you're looking at one target, their linear area, and then you kill them. But the fact that, like, this is a compositional difference, you know? It's basically rock, paper, scissors. And they decided to throw papers and scissors. Yeah. Um, so if I could bet any money right now, before the map pick comes out, they're going to probably pick King's Row because, yep, there it is. Uh, they're going to pick King's Row because it is a brawl map. I think what we're seeing here is similar to what I saw back in the Clock Queens game. Any map that has a little bit more brawl favor towards it, I think CM is going to try to lean that way. Uh, while as MI6 is going to lean towards those maps that have wide open angles where the Widowmaker and the Tracer can get a lot of value. Uh, but nevertheless, I really do think that CM should just stick the brawl. Even on Junkertown, uh, if they had like had a Lucio, even if like they were having issues getting picked off, you run the you run Ryan Sig and you or Ryan Diva, you speed amp and run over the Zen Brig or the Sig, who are just exposed. Uh, the only problem is, I do think, on Junkertown especially, they were at a problem because you can't really get away with Brawl as well on that map as I'm talking, especially on point A, and as we saw, that's why we kind of got full held because of the multiple angles, and Brawl does the same exact thing as Double Barrier, is that they try to cover off a single angle. Uh, however, I just, either that or CM should have probably tried considering running the meta, I think. Uh, and yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. But nevertheless, uh, CM also seems to be subbing in Banana. Uh, the that means they're running Junkrat or Symmetra. Or possibly a Farah. <laughs> and the that's a problem. meme. I... Yeah. Uh, what were you going to say? No, no, I was going to say, uh, I would not be surprised to see the Junkrat uh, if they run the Kree Junkrat here on Brawl. Uh, just because uh, that puts an insane amount of shield pressure out, and this map is the the Ryan Zarya map. Even when it wasn't meta, Ryan Zarya was run on this map. Uh, so we're gonna have to see. Also, uh, Hamwell is coming in. This is uh, not obvious, but this is kind of what I was expecting because Killer Queen wasn't looking too good on that uh, Reinhardt on the first map. So I think they're going to try out uh, Hamwell here because they need to find a really good Reinhardt player that uh, Herping Yoshi cannot perform with. I could definitely see that now. We are seeing Dason being subbed in for Anti... Uh, well, Dason subbed in for Anti Crystal, so now he's coming back in. I've seen a lot of the community kind of talk about how good Dason is in these games. I've never really seen it personally. I think he has questionable positioning at times but he does end up hitting more ults than anyone on than anyone could do in that last you know yep as a former team member of dason uh and someone who's had to do vod reviews with him uh i didn't vod review with him but as a team we did vod reviews um he his positioning is actually pretty good uh for baptiste and he has a tendency to survive uh when the rest of his team dies which is a really good trait to have as a baptiste um, I know it's a little bit easier with the immortality field, obviously. However, he does have he does have pretty good positioning. Uh, and but the only thing I'm seeing now is I'm seeing that this might make the team a little one dimensional because Dason, uh, from what I remember, is not the best Moira. Uh, and luckily, uh, on King's Row you would usually usually run you. Unfortunately, on King's Row you would usually run. Uh, that Moira Lucio support line just for the speed boost and the overall heals. So don't be surprised if we see uh, Dason on the Ana uh, or on the Baptiste here. Um, I I'm also, definitely... yeah, because no. the only I'm seeing, so what's going to be interesting to see is MI, if MI6 can finally uh, show that they have pro uh, proficiency on another composition that is not that Wrecking Ball Sigma composition. Uh, and we'll have to see uh, with this upcoming map. Yeah, we got the stats from that last game in Junkertown. Something I want to point out, Totodial did not die a single time. Zero was on his sheet, while if we look on the other side, both Snake and Corpse died seven times, or something. I'm sure it's not literal seven times, it's just how the stats kind of show it, and that's really bad. Corpse should not have the same amount of deaths compared to a main tank who's in the front line half the time, while the MI6 have one to two on average. That's incredible. That's incredible. Because yeah, no, that means that's they a... won these fights because they're not dying. Yeah, uh, and also notice that's because uh, I believe Pufa 
and Toto were playing the more of their comfort heroes. I don't know how good uh, how good Pufa feels on that Lucio. Uh, and also, I feel like these um, not Zen Totodile was on Baptiste, correct? Uh, he was on Baptiste and Brig, I believe, for the majority of that last round, and he was performing really, really well. So, yeah. Nevertheless, uh, defense composition is coming out. Uh, it looks like they're going to run this May Reaper, uh, which is really common. And as I mentioned, Dason's going to be on that Baptiste. Uh, we'll have to see uh, what MI6 is going to run. I would doubt if they run this composition that we're seeing from them, uh, but you never know. No, I, I could see this being run. It's somewhat viable. I wouldn't be saying against this traditional brawl composition. It doesn't work. But the idea behind it is that Monkey's able to kind of split the team, go for those backline divers, or just honestly create a mass sort of confusion while Monkey is able to run in. Seems like they're going to want to stick on the trees on this. Uh, no, so, the, so the, he's about to go back to Zarya. Uh, he's going to switch because he just want to give a bubble to the tree on the Widowmaker. I bet tree is about to drop down here and go Reaper. Oh, he's going to go Kree. So we're going to have Reaper May versus Kree May. I would definitely say Kree's better for these slow fights. He's going to be able to stun out the enemy, especially any Reapers that's flanking. They're going to use Bubble. Snake gets caught out of position, but they missed the charge on him. How unfortunate. It was so big, but so little. Krayx kind of out, but they get walled off now. The MR coming out to save them. And now these teams are in a weird position because Only Chance is just able to get Hamwell. He doesn't really do anything against it. And they have to back out without their main tanks. There's no chance they could technically win this fight. But Shree's able to get Corpse. However, they get Krayx. So even if they had an opportunity, it's now gone. Yeah, uh, interesting that the wall came out. Uh, the, I, I'm surprised how many, like, both Immortality Fields, both walls came out before someone even died. Uh, that is really uncommon. Uh, and that was really nicely played, I think, by, uh, CM. Now they're going into this brawl, Emor being used to give them some space. Now the Emor and the enemy team is being used. Dream is able to pick up Oni Shan and Beeman, but Snake's able to get Poofa. The advantage is still in. Shatter comes out! Hamwell doesn't manage to block it, and now they're looking to pick them all. Both bubbles on the team comes out. Snake tries to charge, but dies before anything goes turtle. Now frozen, and they have to back off. Dream, or Drowsy, as you know, I'm doing an amazing job of getting value on this area. Yeah. Also, uh, I will say Tree uh, was the critical factor in that. He was able to get a flashbang in that completely stunned the enemy team, and that is the advantage of running a McCree uh, on King's Row. And I do think that they might want to consider switching off this Reaper, because uh, that Kree is just going to put additional pressure onto the shield of Sneaky Snake. Might have to see this. But going into this push, they're leaving Pufa on this cart. They still have a bunch of ultimates to be using due to the aggression. They're using this bubble. Grab! Both of these grabs get used to high noon. Now popped out. Immor keeping both of these teams alive, but they're frozen. Soundbear gets used. Hemma goes down, but Ghost Turtle returns the favor. And now they're just looking to commit these ults in a winless fight for some reason. Forbes did get streamed. They used this blizzard, but he's able to get out of this fight. It's kind of curious of what they're using into these fights yeah what i liked about that was on the first fight dason uses immortality first and that time dason used his immortality second and it kept his team into the match now the enemy team is using blizzard as crown's able to get most of the team freezing tree gets b banana but instead hamwick and kraya go down trees trying to get a pop off he's trying to do as much as he can but shatter comes out i think it got blocked or something it's unable to hit anyone but there's no tank if they want they can just run in they have both their healers and tanks, but they're respecting the enemy. I can understand that. I also like the I like the soft reset. They're gonna have spawn advantages, and they're up four v. They're up, gonna be up six v four here, forcing the team back. And that's exactly what's happening. Yep, and they're wanting to give up this choke while they wait for their May and Reaper to come back. They, I um, mean, their Kree to come back. Look at the shatter comes out, and it's everyone but the wall stops them from following up on it. Unfortunate coming from B Banana. Ha <laughs> B Banana. Uh, now MR coming out, they're looking to get any challenge with this. The High Noon forces them back a bit, but Snake is able to get a MWL who is over-invested into this fight. Now they have Blizzard, and, uh, now they have Death Blossom and Field, but they're going to be saving it for the next fight. Never mind, they're wanting to use this ult just to pick up any stragglers. Yeah, uh, it's interesting that tree, how Tree has been getting a ton of value, uh, but the thing at, at the same exact time, uh, CM played that pretty well. They were able to kite back. Uh, and then re-engage when uh, the Reinhardt had overextended. So, really nice play. However, they're at an ult disadvantage right now. 
they're using the sound barrier to stall them out, but the issue is, is that they're not getting the most value they can out of it. This Reaper waiting to pop out the Death Blossom. He gets called out, but Snake is split. The Shatter comes out. It hits Poofa on top. Now the grab is being used to kind of do this. All ults coming out. Sound barrier keeping them alive. Onichan tried to reposition to use his Death Blossom, but he was unable to. And everyone gets frozen as MI6 are able to just brawl through this. Uh, I do think MI6 is definitely showing a lot more improvement. They're they're engaging quicker, uh, and they're not playing as passively as they were on Li Zhang. Uh, I also will say Tree has been putting a ton of pressure onto Sneaky's barrier. It's been breaking a lot quicker. Uh, also, Oni-chan also was playing that kind of smart hold on to Death Blossom. There's now nothing to counter it besides that immortality field from Baptiste. We're going to be seeing Hanwell have the shatter for this fight. It's his job to end it before it starts, because Oni-chan can... Only chance gonna be able to do much with this death blossom. It comes out, it hits half the team, but there's an end more. Remember him, well, you can't kill anyone in there. You shouldn't run to the back line. That's not how this game works. Death blossom gets used, it gets stunned out, but Quartz is able to pick people off. They honestly could have saved it, but I'm glad to see that they are at least in commit their ultimate, as Tree is also gonna be picked off in the stagger. No, tough to dial this. That's really interesting. <laughs> Craig was just dueling a Lucio while the rest of. Uh, that would have that could have been hazardous if the Lucio had gotten frozen. Uh, Craig was just sitting on the cart, and uh, I'm surprised the rest of CM left him alone. Left him alone. Uh, but compositionally, uh, they do have beat. They have window. Both windows come out. Both fields gets used, a Blizzard in high noon, he's gonna get frozen as he shoots out a bullet and they're unable to do anything. Blizzard kinda won that fight, but I found it funny how they both used the amplification matrix at the same time in very similar position. Yeah, uh, I did like the additional Blizzard uh, on top of the immortality field uh, instead of high noon, cause high noon uh, is pretty good, uh, however if there's a window in front of you, that the, if there's a rhyme shield or a bubble that's given to you, it's just gonna disappear in a heartbeat. Now the grab's being used very early, the Immor gets used, but the Blizzard isolates them and they're unable to do anything. Snake gets split off and now he's going down as we're waiting for these teams to look and go anything. Corpse runs into them and is able to get a 2k, that's absolutely massive. Saves four people on the team and they have to back out. Corpse, you know this man wasn't picked up in the draft and I don't see why, he's absolutely nutty. Yeah. That boop saved the team fight. Uh, Sneaky went a little bit too aggressive, pinned out of the blizzard. Oh, there's gonna be a pause coming out here from Tree. Uh, but nevertheless, Sneaky went ha went aggressive, and because of that, they were already down five v six. And Corbs immediately turns it around before it can get too ugly. Uh, and also, I don't. I'm liking how they're playing this. Uh, actually, I'm not actually uh, in retrospect. I do think they need to be a little bit more aggressive uh, on the side of Crown Munchers. They have the composition that wants to be on top of the enemy, especially with that Reaper, while as the Kree just wants to kind of poke away at your shields. Okay, we're having some, sorry, we apologize because they keep saying R and then they keep saying pause. I'm guessing they're having some ping issues or something, but, you know, they're going to have to stop. Going into this next fight, though, we need to look at these two players right now. Only chance coming back up on the Death Blossom, which could help win the fight. Krayak doesn't have Blizzard anymore. Hemwell has Shatter, but he's been unable to hit anything on it. Corpse DCs! That's unfortunate. He's not going to have any sound barrier built up soon while Poofa he has had his. Sound, he had sound barrier. Uh-oh. I'm I, Or at least he was an 80 to 90 to sound barrier. He was going to build it in one. Never mind. Corpse fight. isn't cracked anymore. Um. So what this does, the thing is, ham, the, so they're going to be, it's going to be a 4v3, uh, two ultimates coming into this next fight. It's going to be Shatter, Blossom, uh, Shatter and Blossom from Onichan and Sneaky versus Shatter, High Noon, B and Window. Uh, I'm not liking. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I'm not liking CM's chances here unless they get this Death Blossom off super early, get a pick off onto the Lucio before he can beat. I think that might be their best shot at this. Uh, if they can engage early, if they will play this too passively and let Tree and Totodile fully build up their ultimates, I say that they had four. Tree and Totodile are both around 70%. Uh, Totodile is closer to 80. But those two will can probably build it in this fight if the fight goes on too long. So uh, I think CM needs to end this quickly, force the beat out, and get force the beat out somehow, and get either a massive blossom or massive shatter out. That's going to be their best shot. Yeah, right. but. They're ba they're basically against the wall. We asked the the CM if Corbs is coming back. 
and we don't know. This may go on for five minutes, and they may be playing the rest of the map without a Lucio. Going into a 5v6, it's possible to win. We've seen it happen in the inaugural season. But I feel that's going to be very demoralizing for the team. Yeah, especially considering what Corb just did. Uh, and not having a Lucio and being down a healer on top of that uh, is going to be extremely bad. Being without that Lucio means the Ryan can't engage. Uh, and that they're going to be down so many utility, so much utility uh, without a Lucio. And considering that the Lucio on the other side has beat, it would basically spell the end of the match, I think. Uh, yeah. Not match, uh, map. Correction. We're, yeah, we're seeing that Corpse may not be able to come back. This is giving MI6 every reason to be able to cap this point with time. Because they don't have speed boost for that sound barrier as a defensive ult to save them, as well as they're not going to be able to speed boost out, of, out or into any fights. So I feel so bad for Crayon Munchers. They were genuinely doing so well in holding this. They're going to have to pop off and do the best they can when it comes into, the, like, into these fights. Oh, we know Corbs is back. Corbs is starting the play Overwatch. Uh, I guess we're all friends oh. with Corbs, which is nice. Uh, but it does look yeah, like Corbs will be able to come back at least, uh, which will be thankful, I hope. Yeah, that was a sweat down my brow. I want, when it comes into this match, I want Crayon Munchers to be able to say, like, if they lose, I want them to have no excuses, you know? I want them to be able to say they tried their best and... You know, okay, so lost, the big thing is uh, Lucio is not going to be there initially. Uh, however, Lucio will be there like almost immediately because of spawn. Uh, so it's not going to be that much of a disadvantage. Again, I really do think they need to engage first, uh, CF, if and not give Tree or Totodile the chance to build up their ultimates uh, in the initial poke phase. Because if they do that, I think that they're going to be at a massive disadvantage. First up, we're going to be seeing these R's as they're preparing into these fights. Corpse, we're so glad to have you back. But let's see if you can make it up to your team as you're switching back to Lucio. Now, they're giving them enough time to set up. It's almost like Corpse never even left. Just use the sound barrier early. We'll give him that. The Reaper getting ready. Oni Chan's placed in such a nice position. They're not watching out. Shatter hits everyone. The Immor is out. Now the Death Blossom. They're able to pick off everyone. It's absolutely creamy massive. But Oni Chan doesn't pay attention. It gets charged out. <laughs> Corbs gets two melee kills onto the Baptiste and Ryan that were retreating. Oh my god. Uh, but really good. But I think that was an overplay by Pufa. She used beat when uh she used beat even after the shatter and because of that she got canceled mid animation however there is, and now there's a free blizzard out however there is shatter high noon and uh window coming out from the side of mi6 it's all about engaging first they use the amplification matrix combo with the high noon but it's placed in such an uncomfortable position they can't make use of it they still manage to pick off sneak now their field is coming out same with the blizzard it's only going to be able to pick up two, but that Zarya is massive. They're not going to be able to build up any form of a grab now in this fight. And they're going into this fight very staggered. Beeping into the, they're kind of using their walls and momentum. Ghost does have uh, their grab. They pop it out. That's going to pick up half of them. No, all of them now. They're looking to get these picks. They're brawling in as Snake returns this fight. It's very messy now. Blizzard from Krayak being used. That's going to get everyone in this maze to solidify the fight for the team. That, that blizzard is probably going to seal it here. Uh, really good play, though. Uh, I really like the use of that ultimate, trying to just slow it down. And they've killed him out at maximum amount of time, especially Onichan here. Uh, though he's about to, probably about to die. There it is. Uh, we'll have yep. to see if they'll be able to recontest, though. Let's see if they can pull off a Herping Yoshi and boop them off. The High Noon comes out. It's looking to pick them off. It doesn't get the ball, though. And he's just doing ball things until they get eaten. I'm so sorry, MI6. Well, I'm so sorry, CM. You tried your best, but you're unable to stop the complete capture. I will say, though, CM played that pretty well, especially on third point. The first two points were kind of rough, but as soon as they got to that third point, they were really able to stabilize. Uh, I like their ult rotation. Uh, I will say, as well, Ghost Turtle, when he came out, uh, spun the wrong way. Um, I, usually, you want to be spitting... I don't know the exact direction, but he, he was going the wrong way, so it wasn't really booping them towards the pit. It was booping them away from the pit. So, uh, I... That was a little bit of a misplay. However, overall, I do think holding them to zero time, because if they finish with time on the bank, uh, over a minute, apologies. Uh, if they finish with over a minute in the bank, uh, it will be, uh, game, it will be, uh, they could only, they cannot lose the map. Sorry, that's what I was trying to say. 
But the thing is, as well, this is a hard map to complete, uh, especially on that third point. So if they, so it is very likely if they get full held. Uh, again, I do think Tree Sixty does put a ton of pressure uh, onto the back line, and I do think that's going to be something they need to uh, put some pressure on the tree. And I do think they probably need to switch to this Cree because I do think uh, even though the Reaper was getting a lot of value, uh, the McCree was getting a lot more. Mm, that's pretty pretty fair. Tree Stun just does so much into this. And honestly, when it comes into this brawl phase, it's up to seeing Hamwell be a lot more productive with his abilities and his positioning. Snake and Hamwell, Hamwell has been the first one to die uh, in almost every single team fight uh, from MI6 uh, that they lose, at least. Uh, and that's gonna be, and that's something Hamwell needs to try to survive a little bit longer, I think, and uh, not be so aggressive. Now, now they're waiting. They're waiting for their speed boost. You should never use it outside of spawn. You should use it for this kind of moment. As they're getting ready, the wall puts him on high ground, but now he falls back down. Both bubbles being used. It's a very messy brawl phase, but everyone on on CM is so low, and they just have to back out of this fight. Yeah, again, the long-range poke of Tree and the Baptiste was just able to put enough chip in that it, in the end it didn't really matter. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if Onichan can live. Uh, if he does, this is going to be amazing. Oh, he does. That's actually nice from Onichan. I, I was thinking he was going to get staggered there, but because of that, they're going to be able to re-engage as a six uh, pretty quickly here. Yeah, even then, we're seeing uh, Tree coming up on a high noon insanely fast. Same with Toe to dial on the amplification matrix. The wall gets used. It doesn't split them, but it looks like they're questioning their positioning. Now they're rotating around the left side of this hotel getting ready to use any of their abilities. Snake is closer to the Shatter, but it's up to him to get it. The wall comes out, splits them up a tiny bit. The field is used now. They're in a very good position. Same with the High Noon. Man, the pick off Corp, so they're now split with no High Noon. Beaver and it, trying to rotate to the other side. Gets caught out. Foul Snake trying to charge, but they've lost this fight, still wanting to commit to it. Yeah, it looked like half the team from CM uh, got confused about the positioning, and because of that, they wasted a May wall uh, making a rotation. Uh, and because of that, I really think that they were at a massive disadvantage. Uh, I also say, I think they kind of misplayed the Baptiste wall. If they had just pressed W and ran past the May wall, they might have been able to catch that McCree in the middle of the High Noon animation. Uh, so I think that right now, they just need to get a little bit more aggressive. That nice shatter, shatter comes out, but the counter shatter! They may have lost course, but the Death Blossom makes this even! Now they're over-investing as Jason uses Amplification Matrix. Uh, yeah. Okay, dude. Uh, Real, so nice counter shatter. Hamwell gets, I think, two on the ground, but immediately Sneaky gets all six. Uh, and I also like the Reaper follow-up. Uh, some might say that was a little over excessive, but you might as well uh, guarantee the fight uh, with that ultimate. Uh, but I do, I do agree that window was a little bit too much. Now they're getting ready for this fight. Both teams have, well, I'm sorry, never mind. CM has only a grab coming up on this fight and a sound barrier because they decided to overuse ults. But on the side of MI6, they have at least three coming back up on the field. Kray is able to get Corpse no sound barrier for this fight. This may be crucial if they decide to speed in. No, they're wanting to wait. They're very respectful. MI6 not choosing to aggress on Uh Oh, we're going to have a Baptiste. We had almost had a Baptiste duel upstairs. Uh, so it all jumped up to the high ground. No, wait, but Daisy goes back up there. <laughs> there, was no. there was a mini There was a mini, mini game there. Grab comes that out. That gets used very early. Immortality being split behind them. The wall blocks them out. Blizzard now used. That's in such a good spot. Snake is unable to do anything. I'm so sorry, B Banana, on top of this payload. But you're going down, 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 back to your spawn room. And here comes the stagger phase. Yeah, Tree 60 has built up another high noon. And that was like less than a fight ago where he had that high noon. Like, that is just insane. Um, also, the window's back up. Totodile and Tree 60 have been maintaining pace on uh, on ultimate charge, which is kind of funny, considering high noon typically is a little bit slower compared to that uh, to the window. So that's just kind of funny, uh, personally. Uh, they do not have a direct counter to this male though, besides the immortality field, but Corb is going to die to a window yep. fire strike. That does over 200 damage and they're able to pick it off. Look at Tree gaining so much oxygen, being able to breathe all over these kids. Yeah, uh, they will have Shatter. It will be Shatter High Noon uh, versus Window and Blizzard. I do think... Oh, no, wait, never mind. Ignore me. The Window was definitely necessary because their Fire Strike was insane. 
Uh, yeah, we're going to be seeing a pause come into this fight. Looks like somebody's mouse has died. Unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of pauses. But yeah. when it comes to MI6 doing an amazing job of holding it and respecting the distance in between, while when it comes to CM, they're not playing aggression, they're losing people early in these fights, as well as they're overcommitting into their ults, having to reset them into, these, into the next fight, or they're not using their ults fast enough. They can win these fights, but they need to play like they can. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I do think they're kind of playing like they're giving too much respect to MI6, I feel, uh, because if they had just pressed W, if they had clicked Blizzard at that exact moment the window came out, uh, even if they lost Corbs, they would have been able to engage and possibly get a couple of picks uh, because it would have at least caught the Baptiste and Ryan. But because they play too slow, the window was able to get value. And consider this, they only used window last fight to win that. They didn't have to invest the High Noon or even uh, the, the recently acquired Shatter that Hamwell had gotten. So they were able to conserve ultimates. Uh, but on the bright, on the other hand, at least uh, CM has yet to well, okay, they wasted a uh, window, right? However, Dason did build up a window in two fights, uh, which isn't bad. He's only a little bit behind Totodile overall in Ult Charge. Uh, so he is keeping pace. Uh, but I do agree with you that if he had had that window earlier, they may not be stuck in this position, especially because this choke is so hard to break. Uh, on the bright side, though, Pufa is still uh, about uh, is that 40% uh, to her beat. So they still don't have a hard counter. Uh, to this May Blizzard um, on the side of MI6. Uh, besides a, sh a counter shatter to stop the aggression. but Yeah, but let's think of this on the bright side. None of these players have uh, spongy cheese at all, and they're getting ready for Look at this. They want to go to this high ground now. I'm liking this. This is going to give them the ability to jump with the Blizzard. But I think they got scouted out. Yeah, by Dream. So now they're going to be backing up. The Blizzard gets chucked in. That's going to hit everyone. There is nothing MI6 can do. They shatter, but the counter shatter comes in and stops any form of a follow-up. Sorry, Hamwell. You're going back to the spawner with that one as you get walled off and you're just unable to do anything. MI6 really nicely played. If that rotate... I like the adaptation right there of not just forcing it down main. They did it once, or, they did it twice. Uh, it failed both times, so they're like, you know what? Let's just completely change it. Most people don't even go up to the high ground on this point. They usually prefer to go to the right hand side. Just avoid it. Just avoid. Just run around because even if you get walled up in the window, you could have just dropped behind and re-engaged. Uh, however, Tree does have this high noon. Uh, they have grab high noon and beat while they only have the grab and blossom on the side of CM. Yep. And in the Blizzard. Now Blizzard getting used. They're going to be charging out of it. It does manage to split them off, which is very good. Immor gets used. Now both Graviton. Soundbear gets used for one side. Corpse just now gets it. He's going to pop it, losing down two. I can understand why. They're going to be trying to win this back with the Death Blossom, but unfortunately they've just lost this fight. Now they're less than a minute. It's all up to Oni Chan to do this. Or Snake, because he's been consistently carrying these games with his Shattered. Yeah, the big thing I saw, um, B Banana got stuck behind the enemy team uh, and and did not engage onto the enemy team. Instead, she went the long way around and then dropped behind them. Uh, and because of that, uh, it gave it, the, her team was in a 5v6 because of it. Even though they avoided the Blizzard, uh, it still caused it. Oh, Hamwell's off on a flank! He's looking out for this. Shatter comes out and hits half of them, and they're able to pick off Snake. That's so unfortunate. 20 seconds on the clock. Now they're in the stall phase. Now they're in this stagger phase. They're trying to back out. I'm so sorry, Corpse. You're going back to the spawn room. It's going to be 10 seconds, and it's all up to B-Banana, the Alpha Omega, the 1%, the bronze player having to touch this point. Is she going to be able to? They don't notice her, and now she's back capping as she slowly moves it back. This going into the fight. They managed to pick up B-Banana. It's up for the rest of the team to touch. The only champ being able to hit Death Blossom comes out, gets stunned to shatter from behind. Now hits his mate, give them the opportunity they've been looking for. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful play right there from MI6. Expe um... Even no, though Oni-chan Oni -chan got distracted enough, even though he got um, stunned out, it caught, forced the Immortality Field out, and Sneaky got a free Shatter off. That was a beautiful play, and they might be able... Uh, it, they, Dream does have the grab, and they do have the Blizzard. Uh, that will be all the ultimates they have, and Oni-chan is forced onto this Tracer. Alright, now when it comes into this fight, 
Are they, they might, no, they're not gonna give CM the cap. They wanna make sure they stop him here, but Hamwell's able to get that pick off grab, now gets used. It's all up for the Immor to save them. Now the Blizzard now being used afterwards to slowly get them. That it's everyone. All there is left is Dayson as he's stuck on the high ground. But I'm sorry, he may be cute. The Shatter comes out, but he gets frozen before he can get any type of follow-up. He still gets shoot 60. The Sound Barrier being used to slowly get them in. Dayson doing an amazing job of keeping Snake up. They're not... Focusing him down. They're not trying to kill this Reinar. They don't care. He's just able to walk around and now his hammer is being used and more is rebuilt up, keeping him in. Snake just looking to do anything. He tried to charge, now officially going to die. Dason and Sound Barrier being used as they try to touch. Pulse Bomb comes out, unable to find and pick. They're looking to do anything. This is so bad for CM. They are now using the Blizzard and Graviton Surge that they built, but Ghost is going to die during the mid fight. They are unable to really touch point. They're having to force themselves on as Dacen is uncontested onside this high ground. While three people are on this card, Oni Chan now going down. This card is so close to being touched. The counter Blizzard and Grab being used, but Dacen can't touch. And MI6 are going to be winning this map, bringing the series up to a two to one. I do say uh, MS6 was playing that really, really well, but I will say uh, at least uh, CM didn't like go out uh, without a whimper. Uh, I do think that they were playing that pretty well. I do think the misplay uh, came out. Uh, the only the big thing was that they were just behind in ultimates, and because of that, they lost the overall fight. Uh, I do think um, CM has not been looking wor bad, I don't think. They've been playing pretty well. It's not like they this isn't... So they were pretty full hell, but they have been playing pretty well. Uh, and I do actually, I have been enjoying ha seeing how they play. But MI6 right now is looking a lot more coordinated uh, overall. Yeah, the crucial also, issue that went into also, those fights. Also, uh, one quick thing as well. I do think they were also at a compositional uh, disadvantage still. Because 360 was getting a lot of value out of that McCree. Uh, and Oni Chan was kind of forced to cower behind his Reinhardt uh, with Reaper. And not able to put additional pressure onto the back line. No, it's, I, I wouldn't say a competitional uh, difference because it's just in the play style and when you want to play it. Uh, MI6 having the McCree gives them a lot more value in playing space and looking for picks. While Crunch, while Crayons need to be playing aggressive, they have to be running in, getting value off Death Blossoms and getting value off just running in there. Reaper does so much damage and they didn't utilize him to his fullest extent. But so, going into, uh, now we're in this... Yeah, real fast. Looking at the stats, by the way, uh, final blows. None, uh, no one on the entire map had over fifteen blows, except for Tree, who had thirty-one final blows. So, um, yeah, I, he was putting out a ton of value on that McCree. Yeah, like, well, on the other side, when it came to deaths, Corpse once again hits ten deaths. He is tied with Dacen for. I, I, I'm ninety five percent sure this is uh, average deaths per minute. I think this is this might be this because I, I, I don't know. Never mind. Ignore me. I'm stupid. I think no, that I, is exactly deaths. Yeah, we are going to be seeing Hanamura get picked. But the issue that comes in this is yes, he his everyone on his team has died over ten times at least on the stats. Snakey dying at the most at sixteen. Only one person on the side of MI six even came close, and that's Hamill at thirteen. He did feed a lot, yeah. But the, this issue is coming in is that they're not doing anything. Dream is able to get up to 17k damage, Tree being next to him at 18k, while the closest one is Snake at 15k. That's yep. your Reinhardt walking in doing base damage. Yeah, if you look at the top three damage dealers on uh, MI6, which was last map was Tree, Dream, and Hamwell, all of them... No, the top two have more damage done than Sneaky, and then Hamwell has more damage done than the bottom two, the next two. Ah. What I was trying to say is the top three damage dealer did a whole lot more damage when compared uh, to the top three on the other, on uh, CM. Uh, interesting that we're going to see Hanamura here. Uh, I'm going to bring us back to this map here. Uh, I actually really like this. I hope Anti-Crystal gets brought in, but we'll have to see. I don't know if him. Yeah, we're going to be seeing Gee Banana definitely be, uh, either leave or be subbed out. 
while we see Yoshi come back in for Hamwell. One more thing I want to put out about the stats is Dayson had the most healing at 27k. Incredibly massive. He did an amazing job keeping himself alive on the last map because if MI if Crayons just had a bit more target focus, they would have won that 100% with the Blizzard and Grav, but they didn't focus anything. Same with MI6, but MI6 was yep. just getting more picks because tree. Yep. Uh, yeah, and also... Uh... Uh, but also, uh, yeah, so real fast on on Hanamura. Uh, oh, banana. Oh, okay, so Hanamura, they're going to bring in, they're bringing in Squillium, which I find intriguing. Now, Hanamura does lend itself to a lot of symmetry play, which is kind of how they won Li Zhang. So I would not be surprised. This is probably why they picked Hanamura. Uh, I don't know what Herping's going to play. Now, Wrecking Ball can work on this map, but typically Wrecking Ball is not played. It's either usually Brawl, it's usually Brawl, or you go full poke on this map. So I don't know it. I don't know how he this Wrecking Ball is going to work. Uh, and also, yeah, I saw that. Also, I knew, yeah, Anti Crystal is also coming back in, uh, which is nice. Um. All right. Yeah, but on the bright side, we are seeing uh, MI6 taking in the defense. They want to try to full hold and end this as fast as possible. But but I know Yoshi and I know Dream. I know Yoshi can play a bit of main tank, and I know Dream can also play a bit of main tank. So they might try to run Ryan, or they may run a kind of split composition with ball with ball hog, where they play these angles and they're looking for opportunities to pick off the back line. Yeah, I do think they might try to ball sig, honestly, on defense. The only problem is I can see MI6 TPing uh, using the Sim Teleport. Uh, that is probably one of the most common attacking strategies in the game just because it works so well on this map. Uh, and because of that, I have a suspicious feeling uh, that CM needs to be prepared for that. And if I was... M not CM. The team names got me confused. MI6 need to be prepared for that, and I have a feeling they're going to run a junk rat specifically the deal uh, with this TP. Um, because junk rat just throws down a mine as the teleporter appears, either destroys it or gets a kill of anyone who comes through it. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't like MI6 on this map as much because while the snipers can get value, uh, a brawl composition is extremely a lot more dominant on this map. And considering they just switched out Hamwell, who seems to be their go-to brawl main tank, uh, I don't know what they're planning. Uh, Intel is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I was worried that you had DC'd there for a second. Oh, no, my, I'm still here. All uh, right. But we are seeing, yeah, look, look at this, ooh, Yoshi. Ooh. A ball this... Zarya composition. This could work, honestly. Like, because this is a lot more of a brawling map, so Sigma would just get run over. At least Zarya has a lot more survivability potential, especially if the Zarya is playing a lot more long range and just looking to help out the ball every time it goes in. Yeah, with the meta changing, this is kind of what you want to see uh, happening. A lot of teams are running with this Zarya. It gives you so much value and so much uh, potential for the ball to just run in, get the Zarya high charge, and Zarya is able to pop and build grab. Look for this. Now they're going for a pause five seconds as the map before it starts. Um, while we do see MI, uh, CM, they're not running a Symmetra. They're running this May. They're not running a main tank. They're running... Diva Zarya, it seems. If they run out of spawn with that, that's a bit scary. Not because it's good, but because it's dumb. Corpse once again DCing. Oh, oh yes. Oh no. If Corpse has to go, I hope they know they can't put somebody in. The game has already started. This is so unfortunate. Yeah, they they're trying to you know, say we can restart the map or some form of idea, but we're so sorry. It's in Flux Cup rules. The moment, if you don't switch someone out before the game, you've lost. You can't reset even if it starts. It's a, It sucks, but this is how CM has to deal with it. Yeah, they're trying to just beg to see if they can switch someone in, but it's so unfortunate.
as we're just waiting. And honestly, now this is giving MI6 the opportunity to full hold. But still, a 5v6 is winnable. Yes, they don't have a Lucio. I, I would not be surprised if... Okay, I, I would not have been surprised if they just forfeit at this point. But that, yeah. I do think that is kind of a silly rule, but whatever. Well, it's... It is, I mean, honestly, I can understand. I, I mean, like, no, like, uh, not in every circumstance. Like, I don't think subbing mid-map is good or, like, doing that. But if someone has extenuating circumstances and has to leave, that's just ridiculous. But. Well, no, because, well, we can, uh, listen, I, uh, I can understand why, but Corbs can let them know. The map just started, yes. But we can't just let them every time because this can be a recurring issue where Corpse has to go. Either way, it's rules. They know about this and they have an understanding that if you leave mid uh, mid map, even when it's just starting, it's gone. So you need to have. So you need to communicate with your team, like talk with your parents or anything that happens. If it's an emergency, then staff can understand. But there's only so much we can do, you know. Morally, yes, it would be nice to do it, but. We have to be honest, and we have to keep no, kind of. I don't think. I think that we're lo They're locked into their roles. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they are locked. They can't switch. Yeah, it's unfortunate. CM, they were looking so good, but now they they are not dealt the right hand. It, it seems MI6 are being very generous, asking if they can just have the sub in. Probably going to have to go to staff before we make any kind of crucial decision when it comes down to it. Yeah, we're just waiting for the word. Yep, never mind. MI6, if they're cool with it, they are allowed to have a sub in. Very generous of MI6, to be honest. Only if Wana allows it. Yeah, Wana, Wana is their manager. Oh, okay. Oh, Wana is Killer Queen. That makes a lot more sense. Yep, yep, that is, okay, that is I, their... Okay, I didn't know, I didn't know that. Yep, they're, they're just waiting. We're probably going to be going into a VC for this... I still don't think CM are going to be able to do good without Corbs. He was doing very well, but the fact that they're probably streaming a lot with him that builds. Okay, Sandy. it looks like it looks like we're gonna have. No, but the thing is, oh no, wait, you're right because Anti Crystal was the one who subbed last time, uh, and I don't think they actually have a support on the bench right now, so they're gonna just put in. Yeah, no, we're gonna restart, so most likely gonna be able to go on the support. Uh, this is taking a while. Uh, but either either way, I don't I, I I don't think I don't think they should be allowed to roll swap though. That's the thing. Well, I think I think what sh they can. Yeah, like I don't think you should be allowed to roll. You, they shouldn't be allowed to roll swap here. Like I don't think because I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to get anti crystal. Uh. Yeah, I don't. I think what they're trying to do is, uh, they're trying to get and they're trying to get uh anti crystal onto the sport line because that's what they practiced. What are we doing? No, we're well, we're starting off. We're not resetting like this. They're not going to be allowed. I don't think they're adding anyone in either. No, they're, they're just... allowing the roll swap, I believe. All right. Well, they're going to allow it to have the support in, but they're not having anyone in. This is how I prefer it even if i don't like the roll swap they're gonna be rotating onto this right side they're most likely demoralized poor cm felt having the undealt hand inside this fight now they're getting ready to look for an advantage to walk in while yoshi getting set up in this position they now have the boot kind of stuck right there slamming down caught them out 
and now they're gonna be able to walk in. I like the fact that they switched anti crystal onto the Lucio. Now they're gonna be able to touch point much faster. Dayson still goes down. That's very unfortunate. Gets picked off by Totodio, and now they're looking to brawl. This is all about working together in this competition, but unfortunately, anti crystal almost gets moved off the map. Squilliam does get herping Yoshi, and now it's up to Dream to look for pits as the main tank into this fight. Craig is flanking, looking for any value when it comes to these pushes. Manages to get Squilliam. Tree gets anti crystal. Yes. Snake does manage to get Kraya, but they're still having to go back to the spawn room. Yeah, Mercy, uh... I don't know. The big thing is they're down their May. Uh, they don't have a da they don't have a way to stop the incoming damage. Uh, I would have said that if they were going to try to commit to this, I'd say Squilia might want to consider going to a Kree. Uh, just to add... No. To be able to put pressure on a Kraya, because they were able to kill off several of them but the Dayson. thing is Dayson has died every time Dayson dies it's just basically game over like they can't push because that's their only source of healing uh the main source of healing at least honestly the way they need to be playing this is much faster they are going so slow on these rotations against a comp that's taking these angles with the advantage like they uh, are i don't think i think they were play they play that ro the right round rotation correct actually you want to get the point without taking uh, without doing poke damage, like the, so, the first push, yes, the first push, yes. But I'm saying the second push. So I they, like this adaptation. This is what yeah. you need to do in this situation. Get the point, hold point. That's got to be your goal. Craig has pulse bomb. Just drop down, used it. Yeah, now Squilliam switching on to the Symmetra. They're not going to have great focus fire with this now, but Bob's being used. They're going to try and focus him down and more as well being used. Anti-Crystal does manage to take out this Bob. They're waiting for this TP. The issue with having this Sem or the Reaper means they can't focus fire the Brawl anymore. They're going to have to wait for the fo They all use Teleport, but Anti-Crystal dies while they get to spawn. Now they're just looking. They need to work as a team. Tree's able to pick up Squilliam. They managed to pick up Dream, but now Mine's being on point. The Amphibian matrix used now they're looking to use any opportunity the contest is still on here ball being able to walk all over them not much of an issue snake is going to go down they're using the chance to stall themselves into this fight because yes this is a 5v6 but there is an opportunity for them to win as we go less to a minute i don't think there is just because the even though they're on lower healing output they have two he sources of heals as soon as dason dies uh it's basically game over or if dason gets disrupted like what happened there and then with that yeah, but that's any situation. but that would be them if they were six anyway not necessarily it, it, that the thing is as well they would ha you have a may which would be able to sustain longer and or a reaper that'd be able to do more damage right now the healing output overcomes the damage output right now they're uh, now using that's... grav looking poofa using out the gun trying to be a dps mercy the sound barrier coming out trying the pulse bomb gets used doesn't manage to find anyone as they're rotating around the points they're still contesting bob being used thrown into the back they're looking to burst it down while the team kind of in this weird angle ghost goes down Ghost is close to going down, but they managed to pick up Bob. Totodile does go down. Looks like they're picking off the majority of MI6, but Krayak is still here looking to get that pop off. The ball still being able to freely contest and get this damage onto Snake. Now he goes down with that 30% Discord damage. The supports are left trying to do anything that they can, and unfortunately CM unable to get a take onto the I don't have much analysis, so... Yeah, well, I personally, if I was them, I would stick onto that Reaper because you can just mow down the enemy team. It's your job to run in, but they would wait for these pushes, count down very slow. They're probably counting down slowly to three, you know, three, two, one. And then they push in, but by that point, Yoshi and the entirety of their team is set up. He slams I down. Do think they went the, I do think they went the wrong way. Uh, even though you took a little bit more poke damage, you should have just gone left straight to the point. Uh, not like run down the middle, obviously, because the Zen, the Ash would just be able to pick you off. I think you should have gone, they should have just aborted their original plan and gone left. Uh, now, I'm expect, I would not exp be surprised if we saw a lot of cheese coming out here. Yeah, there it is. Uh, because there is, their only hope is if they get a draw, they're able to get a support in. So if they can somehow manage the full hold against his composition, uh, then they actually have a chance at getting back into the series. I mean, I don't respect this. I, I respect it because they're in a bad situation. So I don't care uh, because they've been already in a BS situation anyways. So they might as well pull out the BS to counter it. 
So when it comes into this fight, honestly, I don't like the Bastion that much, especially with this double shield. Because of the fact that if they want to go brawl, or if they want to go on to well, like they are now, this ball comp, they can contest point and their focus fire has to switch. I don't think they're going to be very competent when it comes to doing this. As they're getting ready, they're going to want to have to boot these people off of the high ground. Yoshi's just rotating to the back. He's getting into a position. They're counting it down, waiting for this boot. Coming in, gets that Arissa off the slam. Arissa has no shield, immediately has to back up down to half health. Bastion's shield is now broken. And look at him, he's going to go down the res, trying to go out. Sorry, Anti-Crystal, you're going down. And now they're trying to back up. It's only three people left onto this point. Dason's going to emote. I'm guessing he gives up. Not carry anymore if they win or lose. That's sad. And now MI6 are going to be able to win. Map 3 finally taking the series into a 3-1. to one. How unfortunate in the way they lose... But there is still so much potential into the future when it comes to the newly branded team of Crayon Munchers. And still, we need to give credit where credit is due. They did pretty well on these attacks. I do think if they had six, they maybe could have won. I don't believe it was possible. I believe they have a chance. They, and the th I think they could have because they would have had more damage whenever they got the point. Uh, and they would have committed to that sim strategy right out of the bat, I believe. Uh, they were gonna, though they were considering the May, but they would have still had that wall being able to wall off. And if a wrecking ball went in, the May would be able to be freeze up. So I do think that they were at a disadvantage. Uh, I do think they had a better shot if they had six, obviously, but just well, yeah. But five, five v six is still winnable. Five v six is a hundred percent still winnable all the time. And we like, I, I don't like the idea that you know they lost solely because they lost one person. Because it's all wait, it's two one right now. No, it's what? Why are they telling me it's two one? Yeah, it's three one. Uh, I'm feeling like uh, who do you feel like we should bring in? Tree did very amazing, but we often always give a love a lot of love to DPSs. So we uh, so I'm open to any suggestions of who you think. Uh, I'd say either Dream. Uh, I like Dream. Uh, if if Dream doesn't want to come in, uh, then Pufa looks like wants to be interviewed. Uh, Tree does want to get interviewed, but we kind of do give a lot of love. Uh, the Tree. I do think it's either gonna pro. You you know I'll just make the decision. You know what? Next time we'll pick someone else out. We're going straight with Tree because he did do pretty amazing. I have to give him a lot of credit. Absolutely an amazing DPS. As we're waiting for him to get into the call, it probably won't be a long time. Wait, I can probably drag him. Because I, I have... Where are you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I realize. I'm trying to find him. Tree, I found him. Yoink! Come on, Tree. Gonna move to boom. Uh, it feels great to have power. Welcome, Tree. You're muted, by the way. Yes, it does feel great to have. Wait, I, oh wait, where am I? How do you're, I you're, you're in casting booth one. Where do you think you are? You're having the interview. Well, no, no. What's what's weird is I I would have thought that I would have had like caster perms and wouldn't have been auto muted. But you know what? Hey, happens. No, nope, not not having any privileges in nope. here. But you nope. guys have. What what what? Wait. What? Oh, no, go ahead. You're saying something. You're just saying what? Okay, listen. You have just won against uh, CM. I want to get your initial thoughts going into this match. You knew that this is one of the worst rated teams. Yes, that last match was bad, but do you think, like, they did well? Yeah, I know. I think they did well. So just for context, um, I was on a team called uh, One Trick Wonders, and the As majority a of the member of that One yes. Trick Wonders, Yes, I understand, Tree, where you're coming yeah. from. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. I love the guys. They're great. Uh, they were pretty much all of my coaches, Corvs, uh, Anti, and Sneaky. And, well, yeah, I mean, I pretty much know what to expect, right? I was kind of just giving the play-by-play, -play, like, um, yeah, no, Anti-Crystal's bad, so kill him. Um, sneaky feeds, you know, just just typical things. We can't, we can't predict Corvs, but neither can his internet or his parents. So, you know what? We, we had a good idea of what we wanted to do. Um, we went went in, we executed the game plan. It was pretty good. Yeah, you guys 
Memphis did look a lot better on the brawl composition. Uh, I I casted you last, uh, not really casted, but recorded uh, you guys last week against Quaka Queens. You guys looked a lot uncom, a lot more uncomfortable with the brawl uh, than with that sig ball composition. Uh, and it is, does look like you guys put a little bit of work into that, and also uh, you guys looked a lot better on that composition. Yeah, no, I think we did. Um, it's it's really just a matter of trying to get everyone involved with the team, right? What can we do that plays to our players' strengths? Um, and what do we need to do, right? Because I think, realistically, we have crazy DPS, even if you take myself out of the equation. So it's, what does the rest of the team need to set themselves up? Because we are already good. And we have really no slouches on our support line. Um, and really we just need to figure out as a team what comps we want to go into um how to set our tanks and our supports up because realistically everything else everything else will fall in place yeah i i definitely agree with that uh yeah no, no i don't have any i don't have any right yeah i don't have any questions so you're pretty much free to go i'm glad to All see right. how you guys do in the rest of the season yeah, well, uh, shout outs uh, to our coaching staff. Uh, Wild, we love you. Heart, or excuse me, less than three. And uh, yeah, we will see you. All right. An interesting match, to say the least. We'll be having a lot more intense games in the future. But otherwise, I want to thank you all for watching this game. Make sure to tune on any other games that end up getting streamed, especially tomorrow since we'll have the expert division. Otherwise, my name is Intel. This is Florida, and we thank you so much for joining us, Flux. Yes, thank you. Uh, goodbye, I guess.